one out of it. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We're so grateful that you're able to come and tune in with us at this time. So I'm going to ask you if you can just quickly get a hold of someone who may not be watching. Call them up. Let them know that Mount Olivet Gospel Church, we are on the air with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to go right into the word. But before we do, just let us pray. There, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, once again. We thank you for this day. You have given us this day, O oh God, and we have chosen to rejoice and be glad in it. I pray, O oh God, that as I speak what you've given me to your people, that you will anoint me one more time. Bless me, O oh God, so I can get this word out. And when this seed falls on good ground, it will bring forth fruit in due season. I thank you once again, O oh God. For Christ's sake, I pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. We're going to turn to a very familiar portion of Scripture. Daniel. Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3, and we're going to be starting with verse 14. Daniel chapter 3, starting with verse 14, and then going down to verse 18. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do you not serve my gods nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dusima, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not... Be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. The title of this morning's message is, You Can't Touch This. You Can't Touch This. This was a term that was used to express how good someone was or how good something was. For instance, the baseball player, Babe Ruth, his home run record of 714 was considered to be untouchable. No one could come close to breaking it. Of course... Until Hank Aaron did it with 755 home runs. And Aaron's power and distance of hitting home runs, people would say, you can't touch this. His home runs were out of this world. Now, I know there's a problem with Barry Bonds when he came along and he hit 762 but I just want to make a point. MC Hammer, yes, I'm pretty sure you remember him. He sang a song about his dance moves. They were so good, 
Nobody could touch them. Nobody could dance better than he could. People would talk about someone's personality, how nice and how kind this individual is. It would be said, you can't touch this. What they were saying is this person's kindness can't be duplicated. It cannot be touched by anyone. You can't touch this. There are some people you can't wait to eat their food. Their cooking is so good. Even before you start to eat their food, your mouth is already watering. And it is said you can't touch this. So in our lesson for this morning, we see these three young teenagers, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They're making a claim and a statement to the most powerful man in the world at that time. Yes, we know the story of these three Hebrew boys. They and their Jewish nations, they were captured by King Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel, who was their elder in charge of them, he asked if they would not be fed with the king's meat. Now, the reason why he asked this is because these young men with others in the kingdom, they were going to be trained, and they were going to be trained in the king's customs, his ways, on the way that they worshipped, all of their practices, and they wanted these young men. But Daniel had asked, please, let them not eat of the king's table. Because what the king wanted to do is to give them the best meat and the best wine. Now, the only problem with this is, or the problem, I should say, with this was that these foods were offered up to their gods. And this troubled Daniel greatly. So he asked, let them not eat. Now, the person that was taking care of them, he also had a problem because he said, Daniel, you're, you're putting me in a, a very troublesome circumstance right now because if these three young men, if they do not look right, if they are not going to do well, then it's going to be on my head. So an agreement was made, and Daniel said, let's give it some time. And after a certain amount of time, if they are not healthy, if they do not excel and do well, then they will start to eat of the king's table. They came to that agreement. And of course, after a while, these three young men, they were healthier, and they even excelled more than the other students. So the king had ordered these young men to be given certain promotions because as they started to excel, they were promoted. So at this time, these young men, they had been in captivity of the king for about 20 years. And they just keep moving up. They just keep moving up. And everybody is amazed that how these men are moving up, how these young men are doing so well, because they saw the hand of God on their life. And when God has his hands on you, when God has his hands upon you, nobody can touch you. Can you say amen? They can't touch this. And what I'm speaking about is the whole of you. Each area of your life, no one, the Bible says, can pluck you out of God's hand. So one day, the king decides to show his power and to show his authority to all the people. And when you have to show your authority, and when you have to show your power to the people, you really don't have the right kind of power. You're really insecure. So if the king wants to build a statue, a image of gold for the people to worship. This image is pure gold. Now I just want to take you back a little 
there was another image that Daniel spoke of in a dream that the king had. And this particular image, it was part gold, silver, brass, iron, and clay. Daniel had told the king about this image and that one day this statue would fall. And this image represented him and his kingdom. So to prevent this from happening, the king makes this particular image 24 carat pure gold. It was about eight stories high, about nine feet wide. The size of this statue, it would take about 4,400 tons of gold, wow, to make. And the cost, if you bring it up today, it's about $204 million. So again, this is a show of power and might on behalf of the king. You see, because people who abuse their wealth, it's not just about the money, it's about power. This is what it means. And so this is what the king wanted to do. So the king is thinking that this statue, if made right, if made strong, tall, and pure gold, it would stand forever. Thus his kingdom would stand forever. And the prophecy of Daniel would not come to be. Little did he know that statues made by hands, by man's hands, can never stand against a holy God. Can you say amen? And whatever God decrees, there's no king, there's no queen, there's no prophet, there's no demon in hell that can change it. So the king calls for a dedication of this golden image. And all the people of the nation are told to come. So he puts together the largest band that ever was. All kinds of, of musical instruments. And most likely the best players in the nation to play these instruments. And he makes a decree that when the music starts to play, Everyone must bow down and worship the golden image. Whoever does not will be cast in to the fiery furnace. So let's talk about this furnace a little bit. This furnace was used for baking bricks to make buildings for the kingdom. Some others believe that this furnace was also used for human sacrifices. This was most likely not for this particular incident, for this particular furnace. It was probably just made for building material. It was several stories high and very wide to put the wood in for fuel. There were series of steps that led up to the top. The top was completely open for letting the fumes out so that the fumes would not back in or back up. The openings, there were certain openings in this furnace so that they could place the bricks in to be baked. So the order now is given. The music to be played and people to worship and bow down. Now again, think of this. Thousands and thousands of people. The best band in the world. Hundreds and hundreds of musicians. Everybody started to bow down except for three young men. Now it wasn't hard to pick them out because everyone else is bowing down. So I ask the question, are we able to stand when everybody else is bowing? In this crowd, there was a group of people, and they were called the Chaldeans. Now remember, this was the group that the king was going to have killed because they couldn't interpret the king's first dream about the golden image or the image. So these men sought out Daniel 
And it came out that Daniel was able to interpret the dream. Thus, it saved the lives of all of these people because Daniel was able to interpret the dream. How quickly, how quickly people forget the favor that was done on their behalf. So they say to the king, verse 12, there are certain Jews whom thou hast set up over the affairs of the providence of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. So what was happening is they were telling the king, hey, king, guess what? Those guys, those men that you set up over us, they are not obeying your commands. They don't want to worship your God. They don't want to bow down. They don't want to serve you. So guess what, king? They don't have your best interests. What they were trying to do is to get the king so upset, so mad at them that he would tear them down because they wanted the position. They wanted the authority that these three young men had. Jealousy is a real big thing. Can you say amen? So I want you to know all those that call on the name of the Lord, your enemies, and I'm talking about believers, all of us who call on the name of the Lord, your enemies can't touch you. Hallelujah. It may seem or appear that they have the upper hand, but they can't touch you. I don't care where it is. It may be at your job. It may be with uh, family or close friends, and people are jealous of you because God keeps elevating you up. And guess what? People are trying. They're trying to pull you down, but guess what? They can't touch you. Whether you are promoted, wherever what's going on, they cannot touch you. Why? Because God is ordering your steps. Can you say amen? So don't let the enemy also, he can't touch your integrity. Tell the enemy you can't touch this. You see, I don't believe this was the first time that they tried to get at these three young men and tried to pull them down. They were trying to trap them, trying to spy on them, accuse them of some sort of crime so the king would force them to be stripped of their power. It just pays, my brother, it just pays my sister to live right. Can you say amen? So now the king, he's hot. I mean, he's hot to say the least. So he orders them to be brought before him. And I'm pretty sure they were a little roughed up by the guards because of the king's tone when he was talking about them. So the king says, is this true? You're not obeying my command? He doesn't wait for an answer. Interesting. It's like he's saying, okay, you knuckleheads, maybe you didn't understand my first command. So let's try this again one more time. So when you hear the music, bow down and worship my image that I have made. If you don't, your next stop is the furnace. Their response, glory be to God, their response is priceless. One would think that seeing the furnace feeling the heat coming from it, and hearing the threat of the king, they would be shaking in their boots. But they say, hey, king, we are not going to sugarcoat our answer. Hallelujah. We're not going to sugarcoat our words. We're not even going to be careful on how we answer you. Our God is able, hallelujah, 
You could just stop right there. Our God is able. He's able to do all things. Whatever situation you are in right now, nobody can touch you. Hallelujah. Why? Because our God is able. He's able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. And he is able to deliver us from your hands. Now, this is key. This is key, what I'm about to say, what they said. But king, even if he doesn't and we die, we will not bow down. Hallelujah. This makes the king now full of rage. And he orders the furnace to be heated seven times hotter. He has the men bound. These three Hebrew boys led up to the, to the top of the furnace. And what it reminds me of, I can remember in 1986, the Mets, they won the World Series. And as I watch the game, I'm, I'm sitting on the edge of my seat. And I'm just hoping and, and praying that my Mets were going to come through. After they won, of course, all the Mets fans, we are all excited and we're jumping around and we're just having a good time. But now, as I watch the reruns and I watch that series, I already know. I'm going someplace. I already know who wins. But these three young men, they didn't know if they would win or not. They didn't know if they were going to die or live. They didn't know what was going to happen as they were being led to their death. You see, it's one thing to have faith when you know God is going to bring you through, when you know what's going to happen. So we have to think and we have to speak to ourselves. Am I serving the Lord only? Because I'm demanding him to bring me through? Or am I serving him regardless if he brings me through or not? We have to make sure we are working for the Lord. That we're working for the Lord, not expecting a blessing. But we are serving the Lord because we love him if the blessing comes or not. Can you say amen? So what were they saying? They were saying as they were being led up to the top of the furnace is, you can't touch this. You can't touch me with the spirit of fear. Hallelujah. Yes, we have a natural fear when things happen and it causes the body to react with adrenaline and we are moved and prompted to do something. But then there is a spirit of fear that Satan tries to inflict and attack us with. The spirit of fear, it stops us. It paralyzes us from doing God's work and making a stand for the Lord. It can cause you to bow down. But we've got to remember and we've got to tell the enemy, you can't touch this. So we can beat this kind of fear with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Who gives us the power to defeat him, gives us to love, to overcome hate, and a sound mind that we have self-control. This is whom we call on when we are in fear. Can you say amen? Also, what they were saying was, you can't touch this. You can't touch me with compromise. You can't touch this. Sometimes people will just say, hey, listen. Just bow down, and later on, you can go back to serving your God. It's like some people, if you ever seen this happen, they could be in the, the restaurant, and they're about to, they get their food, and they're about to pray, and all of a sudden, you see them put their head down like this, and they're rubbing their head as if to say, oh, man, this 
this headache, this headache. No, but they're praying. But they don't want people to know. When we do things like that, we're bowing down. We've got to say, listen, I am not going to compromise and I'm not going to hide. Hallelujah. What I do in private with the Lord is the same thing I do in public. I will show the world. Hallelujah, I belong to the Lord. Just like Job, he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Queen Esther said, if I perish, I perish. We cannot bow down. We've got to let the enemy know you can't touch this. So we know their story. They're thrown into the, to the fiery furnace, bound, so they wouldn't be able to run out. The men that threw them in were killed because of the intense heat. And the king and the people, they're all watching and waiting and listening. They're listening for the screams. They're listening for them to be burned up. They're listening for them to struggle to get out of their bonds and try to get out of the fiery furnace. But then the king sees them stand up and start to walk around and they're having a conversation who the king hallelujah recognizes as the son of God you can't touch this you can't bind me up because I'm free hallelujah praise the Lord I'm free no longer bound no more chains holding me my soul Hallelujah is resting. It's such a blessing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm free. And whomever the Son sets free is free indeed. The enemy can't touch you by binding you up. The enemy can't touch you by trying to hold you down in the mighty name of Jesus. So in conclusion... The king even tried to touch them by changing their names. This is interesting. The king tried to touch them by changing their names. And you're saying to me, okay, Bishop, what do you mean? You see, because they're Hebrew names, it was Hananiah, which means Yah, or God, is gracious. Michel means what is God? Who is God? And Azaria means Yah or God has helped me. So he hoped the king by changing their name he would be able to touch them and to challenge them it would touch them in such a way that they would lose their relationship with God it would damage their relationship with God but it didn't work call me what you want but you can't touch this some people may say to you that you're dumb or you're stupid they may say that you're ugly or you're never going to amount to anything that you are a loser tell them you can't touch this you see this is the key this is the key can we say you can't touch this while we're being put into the lion's den hallelujah can you say you can't touch this when I'm being thrown into a fiery furnace can you say you can't touch this when I'm being crucified upside down? Can you say you can't touch this when my head is about to be cut off? So no matter what you do to me, Satan, I will never bow down. No matter what you say, I will never worship the false God. You can't touch me even when it means I'm going to be killed. Why? It just simply means that I will be absent from this body and I'll be present with the Lord. You can't touch me. Why? Because I'm surrounded 
by the Holy Spirit. You can't touch me because I got divine intervention by God. You can't touch me because the Holy Spirit lives in me. You can't touch me because greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. So family, my brother, my sister, no matter what you're going through, I don't know who you are with at this time. If you're with somebody, just turn to them quickly and say, the enemy can't touch this. If you're by yourself, you can just simply say to the devil, Satan, you can't touch this because we're covered by the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for reminding us, oh God, even in the times that we are living in, with this virus, the enemy can't touch us because we are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord, we know many have died because of this. But those that have died, oh God, if they were hidden you, if they had accepted you, they're saying also, Satan, you can't touch this. Hallelujah. I pray, oh God, that you will let this word fall on good ground. And I thank you in advance for what you're going to do. For Christ's sake, I pray. Amen and amen. There may be someone here listening. You don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You've never accepted him into your heart. Or there may be someone out there that you backslid. You did have a relationship with the Lord, but you no longer do. And you want to make a recommitment. Or you just simply want to commit your life to Jesus. I'm going to say a simple prayer. All you've got to do is just repeat this prayer. So say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart. Make me the person you want me to be. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that prayer, the Bible says you've been born again. Hallelujah. You've been born again. We would like to hear from you. You should see a number on the screen at this time. Call that number. We would love to speak to you and give you some literature and give you some information to help you grow in the Lord. We all need to grow. I all, I need to grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. You should also see a, a list of all of the services that we're having online. I just want to encourage all of you, please continue your, your giving. It's been a, a blessing, so we want to just encourage you to continue giving. You see all the prayer that we're having the Zoom areas, Sunday school, all of this is being done online. Tune in. We would love to hear you. We would love to hear from you. God bless you. Let's receive the blessing. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be gracious upon you. May the Lord make his face and his countenance shine round about you and to grant you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God loves you. So do we. We'll see you next week, Lord willing. In Jesus' name. Please continue to be safe. Watch your social distancing. We're hearing that the numbers are spiking back up. So please wear your mask your gloves, whatever you need to do. We're praying for you. We're praying for you, my brother. We're praying for you, my sister, in times such as this. Again, God bless you. Love you.
In Jesus' name.